thank you for having me. It's a, a great pleasure to be able to present uh, this work in this nice conference. So uh, it's a project that I did together with Adam Savitsky and Michał Kowalewski from Poland. And uh, yeah, we study connections between uh, epsilon nets, unitary T designs, in the context of random quantum circuits. So I start with defining what an epsilon net is. So uh, yeah, just take unitary channels acting on finite dimensional, finite dimensional space. Uh, so they act via conjugation, via unitary on the quantum states, and you can define a metric on this, uh, on this set, some, some measure of distance. And now uh, an epsilon net uh, is simply a subset of unitary channels uh, with, uh, such that you can use its elements to approximate every element from the unitary group uh, up to accuracy epsilon. So you can imagine that your, uh, yeah, your space is, cover, is covered by balls of radius epsilon and every point from, from the unitary group is within this set. Uh, now, those uh, nets appeal, uh, appear naturally in the context of uh, quantum uh, compilation of quantum gates. So, uh, yeah, in the context of compilation of quantum gates, you are uh, given a, a collection of uh, primitive gates, uh, G, some universal ones, and then you want to uh, find the shortest length of a sequence of those gates uh, such that you can reach your, tar uh, your target uh, unitary uh, V. Okay? Uh, or alternatively, you can uh, look for the smallest L such that the set consisting of uh, sequences of gates from G of length L forms an epsilon net in the, uh, in the unitary group. Um, and we know that there is a solution to this problem, namely uh, for any gate set that is symmetric, namely contains inverses, uh, you can do it with uh, uh, foil logarithmic time in the inverse of the epsilon. Okay, moving to the T designs. So uh, it's another notion that approximates the, the, the properties of the unitary group. So uh, imagine I, uh, okay, I have an ensemble of, uh, of unitaries. Uh, okay, and I'm gonna say that they form a, a T design if, if I take T copies uh, of, uh, of my gates. Okay, and then I uh, take the average over this, this measure mu. Uh, then the channel that I'm getting is the same as if I had taken those gates taken from the uh, unitary group uh, and average over the hard measure over this group. So equivalently, I can say that uh, averages with respect to this measure over balanced polynomials of, of, of order t should agree. And we can relax this notion to talk about approximately designs. So then uh, averages agree approximately and uh, some particularly nice notion uh, for this uh, approximately designs are approximately expanders uh, in which you uh, measure how much those averages are different from each other by the operator norm of the difference of so-called moment operator. And uh, as many of you probably know, uh, those like unitarity designs or approximate unitarity designs, they, they find applications in various branches of quantum info and quantum computing, like randomized benchmarking, uh, in quantum advent in the context of achieving quantum advantage or quantum supremacy. Lastly, in the context of black hole physics, when the degree of the design is associated to complexity. Uh, on the side of implementation of those objects. So we know that multi-qubit Clifford group always form a unitary tree design, but in general uh, for NET, so some systematic, only systematic construction is based on, uh, let's say, uh, application of random local circuits applied to your, uh, applied to the system of, of qubits, okay? So, so then it turns out that in the depth, which is uh, polynomial in the number of qubits and 
in T degree of the design, you can get approximate uh, T design. Now, uh, let me move to, to our results. So the first result that I'm not going, yeah, the first result is uh, uh, that you can use epsilon nets to actually define approximate T designs. Namely, if I have a collection of unitaries that, that form an epsilon net, then I can construct a measure supported on the set uh, such that uh, I will uh, get uh, approximate the expander with, uh, with, uh, with the degree of approximation epsilon t. Okay, so I'm not going to, to prove this result to you now, but maybe the, the opposite uh, direction is interesting. <coughs> Namely, you can take, uh, when you take uh, approximate T expander where T uh, and delta scales like, like I showed on the slides, okay? So then uh, in the support of, of this, uh, in the support of, uh, of this measure, you can uh, define an epsilon net. And I want to give you now intuition for why this result should hold. So, uh, so I consider some polynomial approximation of the Dirac delta at identity of, of my group. Uh, and I take the, I consider now the integral over the, the ball of radius epsilon localized around some unitary gate uh, U0. Okay, and here inside, I'm not sure if you see it, you can, uh, uh, you, you have the, this moment operator that acted, that acted on this uh, function ft. And now, on one end, if my ensemble would form a t design, then this, up, uh, this integral is simply equal to the volume uh, of the ball of radius subsequent around u0. But now, uh, uh, assume that unitaries from the support of this uh, uh, of this measure wouldn't form an epsilon net. So if this is the case, uh, I mean, we can argue that this integral should be, should go to zero as I increase t. So why is that the case? So upon action of this operator t, uh, t associated to the measure, okay, my, in, uh, my uh, delta function gets spread around my unitary group and I have a bunch of peaks uh, localized around uh, like elements of, uh, of this uh, design, okay? So if I am further away than epsilon from, from this B0, then I know that, uh, yeah, the, essentially this uh, integral would be vanishing, okay? Uh, as T increases. So this is just some intuition for why this result should, should hold. And now uh, I want to apply it uh, to, in the context of, uh, yeah, to, to get inverse free slow away Kitaev theorem. So traditional slow away Kitaev theorem assumes that my gate set is symmetric. Okay, so there was some recent, there were some recent results concerning <coughs> possibility of partial removal of those inverses. Uh, so I want to, yeah, present some idea uh, why you can uh, remove them just for it. <coughs> so, uh, so I'm going to use uh, two properties of those moment operators. The, uh, so, by the way, how am I with time? Sorry for the, um, yeah, 10 minutes, okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, so first, uh, when I uh, take the convolution of my measure, L times that corresponds to, uh, to taking the, the t to the power l. Also, this uh, tensor, tensor normal expander decays uh, like exponentially uh, in, with l. And now I'm going to empl uh, employ some very strong result by Peter Vario from a few years back that uh, says that essentially the spectral gap of this moment operator cannot, like doesn't decay too, much, uh, too fast. Okay, so it, it can decay only logarithmically with, uh, with T for any, for any measure, supported on symmetric gate set or not. 
And now, yeah, the idea, the idea of the proof uh, is as follows. So, uh, yeah, I am taking the measure that is, I want to have the measure that is a T design, uh, approximate uh, T expander for T and delta given here. Okay, so how do I do it? I take arbitrary measure. Okay, that is some delta prime approximate T star expander. So I know that if I iterate it sufficient number of times, it will become uh, an epsilon net. Okay, but the number that I need to iterate depends on the spectral gap. Okay, one minus delta prime on the scale of T star. But now uh, this result by variable tells me that uh, this gap cannot be too small. And putting it all together, I get the fact that unitaries from the support of the L fold con uh, convolution of, of this measure mu, okay, uh, form an epsilon net for L, which is uh, for logarithmic in, in one of the uh, epsilon. And now, uh, now what? So this uh, basically, what are the unitaries on this uh, on the support of this convolution of measure? So uh, there, there, there are just uh, gate like uh, gates uh, like sequences of of gates of length L formed from from my initial gates. Okay, so I can give some argument for inverse free so I type. Now, uh, last thing I want to discuss is the efficient. Uh, uh, construction of uh, approximate T designs without requiring the inverses. So let me review first the the, the construction by Brandao, Harrow, and Hrodetsky from 2012. Uh, so there, uh, authors first uh, took uh, local random uh, circuits where in each step you have a random uh, high random two qubit two qubit gates applied. To, to every two, uh, to, to pair of neighboring qubits, okay? And then uh, it is possible to prove that you generate designs efficiently in the number of qubits and the degree of the design. Now, when you replace this higher measure by, the, by some symmetric gates at G, okay? Uh, you cannot apply those results directly, but uh, you can relate now the spectral gap of the, uh, of your trans, uh, of your moment operator to the let's say just local gap so this is the property of individual uh, of the gate set and the global gap that was controlling the convergence of the previous case and now uh, effectively uh, the 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 time needed the depth uh, needed for the case of the uh, symmetric g can be just uh, functionally related to the depth needed for the uh, high random uh, case. Okay, uh, but what do authors of this paper do in the uh, in? So they 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 employ strong result by Burgel and Gambor that say that okay, if if G is symmetric with algebraic entries, this thing over here is basically a constant. So you have the same type of convergence. Okay, so uh, right. So what we can do, we can say that, okay, for arbitrary universal gate set, it's, it's not going to, to increase too much, this inverse, because it's just bound, like zero bounded one, one over log t squared, okay? But in order for this algorithm, this method to work, you need to, uh, to begin with, have the, the symmetric G. Oh, one minute left, okay, awesome. Uh, right. Uh, so I'm almost okay. Basically, I, I think I need to skip uh, this part to a large extent. Let me just, yeah, let me just argue that you can still work around it. Okay. And uh, yeah, so, so, so even if G is not symmetric, then uh, you, you can. Per yeah, so I, I need to just, uh, you can basically relate the, uh, the, the case of non-symmetric G to the case of symmetric G, uh, while, 
yes uh, yeah so uh, and essentially you you get the convert uh, the, yeah you get efficiently a design uh, without any assumptions about uh, algebraic entries of g or whether you have universals or not at, at this point i should mention that that related that some partial progress in that direction was obtained in uh, by Metzger and others th this year. Okay, uh, right. So it's time to conclude. So uh, I presented some quantitative relation between approximately designs in upscale maps. Uh, you have uh, uh, also possibility to have inverse free, so a Kitaya theorem, but non-constructive one. Uh, and lastly, I tried to explain that you can efficiently generate approximately designs without requiring inverses. So some open problems for the future. So it would be great to have inverse free so a Kitai algorithm. So uh, I don't give you the algorithm how to find the sequence. Uh, also, an improved dependence of on the degree of the design on D and epsilon uh, is, uh, would be interesting. And uh, we are trying currently to connect it to the comp problem of the uh, complexity of random quantum circuits, this connection. So uh, yeah, with that, uh, I'd like to conclude. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for an interesting talk, Marka. Um, as usual, please place any interesting questions that you ha might have in the, relevant, in the Slack channel. We're now on talk three from session eight. Um, so, uh, Joan uh, Duan Camp starts starts us off with a question, which is, why is it desirable to dispense with the inverses? Well, so in, uh, why? So, uh, so first you can imagine that like the, the less uh, amount of gates you, you've got, the 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 better, uh, basically. That's uh, that's one possible answer. Also, another uh, uh, case in the context of this complexity of uh, like increase of complexity in the context of black hole so you would like uh, yeah you you model what some some scrambling Hamiltonian via ensemble of random circuits so uh, you would like your results to be as generic as as possible uh, yeah aside from mathematical curiosity so these are the things that come to my mind at the moment we now have a question from Peter Morgan, who says, could you say a little bit more about T designs and how they might be applied? About T designs, how, <laughs> right. Uh, right, so, I mean, the, so these are like, what should I say? Uh, they are like basic, yeah, so, so, so basically, there are some vital points of some uh, some methods used in quantum computing or quantum info. Like, for example, when you do, uh, yeah, when you do uh, randomized benchmarking, you, uh, yeah, you are, you are, um, you use this property that I mentioned that the averages over the uh, of the over the ensemble correspond to the averages over the hair measure, right? But this is just for, yeah, for most of the applications are let's say for the low for the regime of low low p okay thanks yeah so it's uh yeah i guess i cannot elaborate that yeah that's my show yeah. i think you will join me in thanking mikhail again and thanks. now we'll move on to our final talk of the day